very much. How do we remember history, times, and events? For some people, it's a sound, it's a smell, it's an emotion, a birthday, a discovery, or a song, or another event. When you were born, when you graduated high school or college, when you got married or had children. Imagine if you had to create the future infrastructure that millions of lives would depend on. John did just that. Fellow Toastmasters and dignitaries guests, today I'm going to share with you my thoughts and recollections about John Wigginstein, a member who is the founding father of emergency medicine. I want you to picture in your mind this scene. Joe was driving in California on US-1, the, the Pacific Coast Highway. He looks out over the Pacific as the sun begins to set. Suddenly, a turtle crosses the road, and he turns the wheel and goes off the road. You can hear the streaking as he loses control of his vehicle. He landed partially down on a cliff perched and unsteady, his airbag deployed. He is bleeding from his face. He has pain in his abdomen. His concentration is wavering. He raises his iPhone and calls for help before he passes out. But what would happen if it was 1960? What have you taken for granted and did not yet exist? What technologies? In 1960, for those that were alive then, there was no specialty of emergency medicine as we know it. There was not an EMS system. There were no paramedics, EMTs, advanced cardiac life support, or advanced trauma life support. There was no trauma system to take them to a specialized hospital. There were no smartphones. Hospitals did not have emergency departments. If a hospital did have an ER, an emergency room in the basement of the hospital, it was staffed by all members of the hospital, including the psychiatrist, the dermatologist, the pathologist, family practitioners and pediatricians and internists, amongst others. The public began to realize that they wanted to go to a hospital in times of need and meet doctors who were actually trained to take care of them. In 1965, a group of physicians in Alexandria, Virginia, got together and formed the first group of full-time emergency medicine physicians. Later in 1968, 11 physicians, led by Dr. John Wigginstein, formed the American College of Emergency Physicians. John was a gentle giant at six foot four. He was soft speaking with white flowing hair, looking a little bit like Marcus Welby of TV fame. His undergraduate degree was in divinity before he went to medical school. He was a practicing family physician with ties to the University of Michigan after his brief military service. But his divinity training helped him relate to everyone and be a great communicator. John led a courageous group of physicians to create a future that he envisioned, an environment where physicians chose to be in hospital-based practice full-time, 24-7, 365. They would receive continuous specialty training. A specialty board would be created with the development of residency programs and research activity to improve the health and outcomes of patients that were critically ill or injured. They would set up a community structure of regionalized and cooperative care based on the military models of Vietnam, where they had trauma centers, EMS, and helicopter transport to specialty centers to take care of unique problems like neurotrauma, Regular trauma to the admin. You saw those things on MASH. I entered college in 1968 and was a participant in creating the first student owned and operated ambulance company in 1970. I became aware of John's work and met him in 1979. His enthusiasm for emergency medicine was infectious. 
He infected me and directed me into a lifelong career in emergency medicine. It was 50 years ago that John's leadership created the American College of Emergency Physicians, known as ASEP. John is no longer here, but look back to what he had accomplished. He accomplished an organization, the American College of Emergency Physicians, celebrating their 50th anniversary this year. ASIP holds many delegated seats at the AMA, a testament to their participation and recognition by the entire House of Medicine. The American Board of Emergency Medicine was created and granted full primary board status in 1989. It administers board certifying and sub-certification examinations. There are now more than 185 residencies in emergency medicine, with more than seven subspecialty boards, all coming from John's vision. There are now more than 37,000 members of ASEP, training in advanced cardiac life support, basic life support, advanced trauma life support, and PALS, which is pediatric advanced life support, is widespread, and trauma systems exist throughout the country because of John. Emergency physicians are medical directors for much of the EMS system. All of these structures and foundations owe their existence in part to John Wigenstein. One person can affect change. One person can make a difference. One person can change the world. Are you ready to make that difference? Are you ready to leave your mark on history? Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster.